<laughs> Welcome back. Millions of kids around the world get a new book every month <laughs> thanks to Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. And many of those kids call Miss Dolly the book lady. Yeah, she's keeping her eye on I me. Mean, you can tell. As Emily DeVoe tells us, the books aren't chosen based on what's popular at the moment. There's a rigorous selection process that happens every year. I probably should have done it as a kid. Listen to the language here. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the door swung open. That's the kind of language you want to hear for kids. Jinx Watson is on the committee that makes Dolly Parton's Imagination Library what it is. She picks the books. Once a year, um, and they kind of put us in a room with 300 books and give us two and a half days and we do our selection. We read every single book aloud to each other so that we can hear it, how it sounds, as if we were the child listening to the cadence, the rhyme, the rhythm. And uh, it's a pretty powerful experience. The retired University of Tennessee associate professor taught children's literature to aspiring librarians before joining Dolly's team. There's no toy that does what a good picture book does. Because when you're reading a picture book, the children are getting stories from the pictures and they're listening to the words. And sometimes they have to put those two together. I mean, sometimes they're sort of, wow, there's all this stuff happening in the pictures. And yet the words are saying another story. It's kind of nuanced. It's sort of, um, we might not see it right off the bat, but children will sometimes slow you down. No, don't turn the page yet. He's busy looking all over for clues in the picture. <laughs> So it is the one item that is a great brain food. She says the committee looks at everything from topic to language and, of course, the pictures. We look at artistic pictures, not cutesy pictures, but we look at real art. We look at watercolors. We look at collage. We look at cartoon. We look at uh, fabric and textiles that people have used to, to illustrate their books. We want a variety of art styles. Um, we want a variety of themes, so we are in a balancing act. One of the hardest parts of the process is deciding whether to replace a book on the list with another one. We always try to put some very familiar classic um, books in there so that the kids go to school knowing these stories that everybody knows, you know. In fact, we call that literary illusion. The idea that a teacher might say, ooh, your nose is growing just a mile long there. And if you didn't know Pinocchio, or if you didn't know that reference, you'd be out of it. In the two plus decades she's been involved, the same years the program's been around, Watson says she still considers the Imagination Library the best reading program she's seen. I'm Emily DeVoe reporting. And her advice for parents is set aside 20 minutes a day to read with your kids. And if you're not sure what books to pick out, Start with authors already on the Imagination Library list or simply ask your librarian. But Dolly's Imagination Library, she says that will be one of the things she uh, hopes to leave as her legacy. She started this program in honor of her dad. He couldn't read and he was so proud of Dolly. She says he was probably prouder of this program that? than any other achievement. And he got to see a lot of the success with Imagination Library. Amazing.